Hi, my name is Lauren Ostapovich, and I'm the Molecular Spectroscopy Product Specialist here at Shimatsu Scientific Instruments. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to analyze and identify microplastics with Shimatsu's newest infrared Raman microscope, the AirSight. Before we dive into the microplastic analysis, I first need to cool the microscope detector with liquid nitrogen, power on the FTIR bench, and power on the AirSight. For more information on this process, please see my previous AirSight's best practice video on our YouTube channel. Once the FTIR bench and microscope are turned on and the detector is chilled, I can open the AM Solution Measurement Software program, first ensuring there's no sample on the stage. Then connect and initialize the microscope by clicking the disconnect button. Then a ready green button notifies me that the microscope is ready to start collecting data. Let's start by selecting the orange IR button at the top of the screen to start the IR measurement process. I like to click eject sample whenever I place a sample on the stage because this lowers the stage and rotates the objectives out of the way. Microplastics will most likely be stuck to the filter that was used during preparation. After thoroughly drying the filter, it can simply be placed on the sample stage. I have the filter secured to a mirror to ensure the sample is flat and increase reflection back to the detector. Since the filters are generally not transparent in the infrared region, reflection mode will be a good option to start with. Select reflection measurement mode from the drop-down list. Moving one tile down under the parameter settings, we need to select a few more FTIR measurement settings. Middle resolution of eight centimeters inverse is standard for an FTIR microscope, and that's what I'll use here. 100 scans is a good place to start and will require about two minutes for acquisition. The measurement mode choice is a personal preference because it's simply a math equation to convert between them. I prefer viewing absorbance data, so that's what I'm going to use for this demo. A wave number range of 700 to 4,000 centimeters inverse is standard for a T2SL detector, and there's no reason to adjust it. Now that all of our FTIR parameters are ready to go, I need to find some interesting spots to measure. First, I select the wide field camera from the objectives dropdown list and use the Z height adjustment to focus on the sample and get a clear image. This is looking pretty good. Can you see any microplastics yet? With a focused image, I can scan in the X and Y directions to find an area of interest. I can also double click anywhere on the active image and bring that to the center of the microscope area. I'm pretty happy with this and the image clarity and location look good. So now I can click photograph one image to capture this active image and bring it down to the lower tile as a reference point. With the wide field image saved as a reference, I'll go back to the objectives dropdown list and select 15 times reflection objective from that dropdown list. The objectives above the sample are now revolving to bring the 15 times magnification camera and the IR beam into use. Slight adjustment of the Z height is needed to refocus to the focal point of this new camera and the X and Y positions of the camera overlap perfectly, but the Z height focus differs slightly. To make our lives easier, this purple box in the wide field camera is the current location of the 15 times magnification image above in the upper active tile. Double clicking anywhere on this captured wide field camera image will automatically bring the 15 times magnification camera objective to that location. Using the wide field camera image as a guide, I'm going to use the X and Y arrows to scan the 15 times objective to find some microplastics of interest. Here's a nice example. It's a good idea to do some fine adjusting in the Z height to really bring the focus to the top of the sample and optimize the IR beam path. This looks nice. So I'll click photograph one image again to capture the magnified image at that location. And notice how this image is overlaid on the wide field image. Now that we have nice microscope images of microplastics, it is time to start to set a few more IR parameters. Select measurement type from the register measurement points menu. I'm going to select point for this example to look at each microplastic independently. If you do not have the optional mapping software, line and area will not be available. Next, I need to select the aperture size. I'm going to start with 50 by 50 microns, but this can easily be adjusted later. Simply click on the spot you want to measure with the IR microscope. How about this one right here? and the blue aperture box will appear with the flag numbered one. The aperture size doesn't quite match up with this microplastic bead, so let me adjust the boundary and orientation to capture as much of the microplastic without sampling the surrounding filter. The X, Y, Z, and aperture size are all saved with this registered point. 
Now I'm going to repeat this location selection process for a few more interesting spots. Now that we registered our sampling locations, it is time to register our background location. I'm going to scan away from the microplastics and pick a clean part of the filter. The Z height focus needs a little touching up because the filter is below the microplastics. Since the aperture sizes and orientations of the sample measurements are all different, I need to measure the background every time with a corresponding background aperture. Lucky for us, AM Solution software knows that. And when I click registration and drop the background flag on the image, it automatically creates a matching background aperture for each sample measurement aperture. The last step in the FTIR measurement setup is selecting what to name the data and where to save it. I like to check this auto increment box so the data is saved with an ascending number at the end of the file name. Now that all of the images are captured and the points are registered for the FTIR microscope, I can click the green sample scan button at the bottom and the air site will automatically move to each point and collect FTIR data. Now that we have the FTIR microscope settings and sampling position set, we can move on to the Raman mode. Simply click on the blue tab at the top of the window to switch to those Raman settings. Similar to the FTIR measurement settings, the AM Solution software intuitively places the parameter settings in an easy to follow order. Notice how our sampling locations transferred over to the Raman microscope. We don't have to hunt for them again. I can simply double click on each point to jump to each microplastic bead of interest. I know I'm only going to be using the 532 nanometer laser for these microplastic samples, so I will just turn that one on and select it. I will also switch to the 50 times objective lens. This will rotate the revolver and bring the Raman camera above the sample. In this case, there is no reason to go back to the wide field camera because we can use that image as a reference here too. Now the camera image tile is the live 50 times objective camera and I need to adjust the Z height slightly to bring the camera into focus. Next, I have to select the appropriate neutral density filter to get a nice Raman spectrum without damaging the sample. I'll start with a low percentage and decrease the dimming rate if needed. Stepping down to the parameter settings tile, I need to set the number of scans. 50 scans is a good starting point for microplastics. If the data looks a little noisy, we can always increase this later. Next is to set the wave number range. The wave number range for a 532 nanometer laser is 150 to 4,000 centimeters inverse. So I will use that whole range. An exposure time of one second is a good starting place for microplastics. I need to first close the light shielding cover by pressing up on the shield until it clicks. The last step in the Raman measurement setup is selecting what to name the data file and where to save it. I like to check this auto increment box so the data is saved with an ascending number at the end of the file name. Now that all of the images are captured and points are registered for the Raman microscope, I can click the green sample scan button at the bottom and the air site will automatically move to each point and collect Raman data. As soon as the first spectrum is collected, the AM Solution Analysis software will open automatically and populate with that data. Here is where you have some options to correct, analyze, library search your data, and determine lengths of particles. Thank you for joining me on this demonstration of analyzing microplastics with Shimatsu's newest infrared Raman microscope, the AirSight. If you'd like more information about this instrument, please visit us at ssi.shimatsu.com. Excellence in science, Shimazu.